it's funny. I refute determinism both on a logical basis, like the idea that everything's predetermined, mm -hmm. and on a simple point of self-rationality, right. which is that I think, therefore, I must be able to choose. But it's that question of, like, you know, uh, if, say as an example, a thought experiment, let's say, uh, you have a person who um, has memory issues, goes into a shop and buys a coffee. Uh, they have a, an option between coffee and tea, say as an example. Uh, and they, their motivating factor there is the question of like, you know, they want something warm to drink type idea. They want something warm and soothing to drink. And so they go with coffee. They leave, they put their coffee down and like tie their shoe or something, completely forget that they were in there at all and go right back in. And do they make the same choice again type idea, you know? Uh, the same kind of thing is like, you know, uh, what it's the op it's the future version of what people would say with the question of like, if you go into the past, would you make the same decision type thing, you know? But making it a bit more of a realistic, re realistic question. And um, does it, it matter though? Again, yeah, that's what it kind of comes down to. It always comes back to that question of what does it effectively matter? But the qu point is, in that case, does his choice matter at all? Do, if he chooses coffee or tea, does it have any fucking relevance whatsoever? Well, it does when considering the question of do we have choice. Actually, still, it doesn't. Because they're using... Choice doesn't come from random-ass things like coffee or tea when you have no care. That's not a choice. That's, Bur that's Burden's ass in work, which is that... With, between two equal outcomes, there is no choice. There's only preference. But that's the effectively what they mean by choice is the question of preference. Well, if you are cho it what is what you prefer in that case actually your choice type idea? It must be, or someone else had to choose it. That's the thing. Choice happened somewhere. Who chose, if not the person making the choice? But that's the point, is that some people say that that isn't really choice. What that is is just natural things happening, basically, of you are going through the motions of being you. Actually, once. the thing is, then their example goes to disprove determinism. Because let's say he chooses a different beverage next time. Well, that's the point, is that the question presented is that he would say that he would make the same decision again. Type How do you know? You're accounting for uh, this fictive person's actions when you can't. Mm -hmm. Which is to say that you know what they're going to do next, when in reality that is impossible. To predict anyone's actions. Well, I, I, to my understanding, the basic idea of, like, you know, of course there's all different types of determinism, and I don't know much about it, so, but... My understanding of at least some people's view of determinism is that um, if you could know everything about a person down to the subatomic level, you would be able to predict what they're going to do without them like, making a choice. And that way, what they are doing is determined. But that doesn't follow through rationally. Like, it sounds solid until you actually look at the human condition. Which is, we make arbitrary choices based, well, not on any discernible or explainable thing. Otherwise, if determinism's real, there must be an overriding factor that causes determination. Right? Quantum physics and everything? Then how does that explain the choices of people that are irrational? Because not all choices are rational. True. But at that point then effectively we have the ability to choose. Why? Because quite simply, if I can just decide, like, I can just decide, like, bah, right now. Mm -hmm. What? Other than I just felt like it. The fact that you... It's kind of like, again, um, what I was going to say, like, if we had done that drunk video about it, is that it's basically judging things from the position of 
assuming more or less that we can predetermine these things. But you can't. From the stance of predetermination, we can then say, well, you were going to make that choice and so, and it was determined that you would do so. You could not have but made any other choice. There must be a choice. determiner. That's one of the core issues. Mm -hmm. Determinism requires determination. But and to the, say that the, the question totality is whether it is a subjective determination or an objective Well, here's the thing. If you want to argue, like these people, that the totality of your being constitutes what makes your choices, then we choose. You affect yourself as a being regularly. All of those choices have further effect upon us changing us. You cannot point to something and say, this destines you from start to finish of your life to act this way because every seven years your cells are completely replaced. Any single point you point to in the human body as a deterministic factor is altered within seven years. But that also itself is a factor though. It is, but what this does is it takes the question and makes it so absurd that it's pointless. Because if everything acts on you to determine your choices for you, but everything acts on it, then effectively nothing. It doesn't matter. Exactly. That's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's my point, though, is that when it comes down to it, effectively the, the question is completely absurd. pointless. The question is more than pointless. It's absurd to ask. It's kind of like, again, going back to things like, you know, radical skepticism of, well, you can't know anything. Well, at that point, you can't know that. Well, at that point, yeah, you, it's self-refuting. Exactly. Because to sit there and say everything is predetermined is in of itself a non-consequential conclusion. If everything Because then everything is predetermined. In fact, you're determining that everything's predetermined was predetermined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thus, everything has choice anyway. <laughs> Because it's the same as though it did. Right. It's equivalency. When you have it reach such a level where there is no actual single determining factor, but everything interacts with everything to sort of create choice, it's sort of a natural system then. It is effectively the same as choosing. Or such a strong simacralum of the effect of choice that there's no difference. Thus we have choice and I'll believe it even if we don't because there's no difference between the two beliefs. That's what that comes down to. There is no difference between determinism and non-determinism. They do nothing. 